suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Murder's tricky stuff to fool around with. Like nitroglycerin, H-bombs, and a woman's heart, you have to know how to handle it. And when an amateur dabbles in the murder market, well, as they used to say in ancient Rome, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. Listen. Listen then to what happened to such an innocent as Everett Sloan stars in Alibi, which begins in exactly one minute. In the great legends of America, there was always room for the fairer sex. Now, I don't know if you'd call stack of dollars the fairer sex, or if she'd be what you might call a pinup girl, but she sure impressed many men along the Mississippi during the early riverboat days. She had two diamond teeth with gold fillings, and when she opened her mouth with a sunburst smile, didn't they glitter? She feared nothing and nobody. Her motto was, come clean or come dirty and get cleaned. She could put a knot on a bully's head so big he wouldn't know whether the knot was on him or he was the knot. She had a full bosom, wore an eight-gallon Stetson, smoked cheroots. She ruled the levee with her big fist. And her boyfriend claimed he liked her because she whooped him so good. Yes, that was the gal called Stack of Dollars. <laughs> Folklore belongs to every nation's legendary past. And I guess we Americans have our share of some tall ones. And now... Mr. Everett Sloan in Alibi. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. There was nothing to it, really, once I'd made up my mind. That was the hard part, making up my mind. Not that Hannigan would be any great loss to anybody, including himself. But after all, you don't often go shopping for somebody to bump off your business partner. <laughs> Never mind how I found the address. It was a grimy storefront between a press while you wait tailor and a fly-blown fruit store. Dusty cigarette stand-up posters littered the window. Inside, there was a stock of tobacco and candy that wouldn't have tempted a five-year-old. Not much danger of customers disturbing you here. A pair of sharp eyes under a green eye shade were looking at me. Yeah. I... I want to see Barney. Oh, I, I phoned him. He, he gave me this address. Back there. Thanks. Come in. Uh, are you Barney? So? Well, I, I phoned you yesterday. My name Never is... Never mind. You wanted a job done, is that it? Well, Yes. Short job or all the way? A uh, short job? You just want to scare the guy? You break his arm or rough him up? No, no. Uh, this has to be all the way. You see, he's my business partner and... The big I... chill is a thousand bucks in advance. A thousand? But I heard... What you heard don't count, mister. Well, I, I, I've got 500 here. I'll be able to get the rest easily enough as soon as... As soon as you get your mitts in the till, huh? Oh, no, it's, it's not that way at all. It, it's just that Hannigan, he put the money in the business and, and he watches it like a hawk. He, he'd slap me in jail in a wink if I... Probably is ready to slap you in jail already, no? How did you know? Not hard to guess. Well, as soon as he checks the books, first of the month... Only Hannigan ain't gonna be around the first of the month, is he? Uh, that's right. If you get busy and scare up to the rest of the grand, that is... But there's no time. Tomorrow is the first. So? Oh, no, please, Bonnie, you've got to trust me. I I'll pay you on my word of honor. On your what? Oh, well, you know what I mean. I, I swear it, Barney. Well, I ought to have my head examined. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I'll take the five on account. Uh, yeah, sure. Here. I'll, uh, I'll get you the rest tomorrow. Okay. How about the subject? Where do we find him? Well, I, I, I don't want anything around the office, you understand? He lives in the Gatesworth. Gatesworth, huh? 
Better if we could catch him outside. Oh, well, he lives by the clock. Every night at 9, uh, never later than 9.15, he goes to the drugstore across the street for a hot malted milk. Uh, helps put him to sleep. Fine. We can do a car job. What's he look like? Oh, I've got a, got a picture here. Good, I'll take it. Now, you'll destroy that uh, later. I don't think you appreciate it, mister, the favor I'm doing you. This is the first time I ever worked a job without the green stuff in my hands, all of it. Oh, oh, I appreciate it, honestly, I... And I sure hope I don't have no trouble with you. Oh, no, 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 you can count on me. That's good, I hate trouble. Now we gotta fix you up with an alibi. Me? Sure, you. Who are the cops gonna think of first when your partner gets the blast? Oh. Don't worry, we take care of our customers. The law won't get the first base... Because you'll be all sewed up with an airtight alibi. Well, I, I, I thought I, I'd just take a trip out of town. Where to? What for? Who are you going to see? Why, uh... Skip it. That's the first thing they all think of. Well, I never thought... That's the trouble with you amateurs. You never think. Well, if I, I just stayed home with my wife? No. And we can't have your visiting friends either. You'd blow the deal before you said three words. Oh, I don't think I... You're not... Look, you're paying me to do your thinking, mister. We got our own skins to look out for, too. Now, what business did you say you were in? Uh, tea and coffee, wholesale. Ever stop for a drink on your way home? Yeah, sometimes. All right, tell you what we'll do. You know the Pelican? Yeah. Be at the Pelican at six. Somebody will meet you. You stick with him and you'll be in the clear. Yeah, but who... I'm thinking of a guy I can trust, name Allen. He's got a couple of restaurants. You can be selling them coffee, catch? Well, if you think it's necessary. Here, mister. Here's your five bills back. Well, what do you mean? Get yourself another boy. Oh, no, now, wait a minute. You can't back out on me now. If Hannigan gets a look at those books, I... I'll, I'll do anything you say. The Pelican at six, Mr. Allen. Well, that's better. Now, you just follow orders and everything's going to work out just dandy. I walked out of Bonnie's with a feeling of elation. As for Hannigan, I felt no qualms about ending his miserable existence... He was old, withered, a man who had never in his selfish life done anything to help or comfort another. I had taken him into the business when I needed money. He had plenty of that, but I saw mighty little of it. No, I wasn't at all sorry I'd gone to Barney. Oh, of course, Barney'd been a little too pessimistic about this alibi business. No reason I couldn't handle it myself. Why... I could go into the Pelican right now and more likely than not run into somebody I knew. But when I got there, there was something different about it. The neon signs weren't lighted and there was a notice nailed to the door, closed for violation. Yeah, how about that, Mark? What? Padlocked. I got a thirst. Oh, oh hello, Lee. Yeah, well, the Pelican isn't the only place in town. Let's drop around to Moriarty's. Uh, no, I, uh, I'm afraid I can't, Lee. Ah, uh, nonsense. You look like you could use a drink. Anyway, I haven't seen you for a month of Sundays, and I'm not going to let you get away before I buy you a piece of booze. There isn't much you can do with a persistent pal. Nothing much without making him suspicious. So I went along. Anyway, I still had plenty of time. Barney made it sound hard, building himself up. Sitting at Moriarty's with Lee, I, I had to laugh to myself at how easy it was. Why, I could take this fellow here, a casual business acquaintance, invite him to dinner, spend the evening with him, and I'd have my alibi. The, the shock of finding the pelican closed wore off. The pleasant, inconsequential chit-chat over the smooth martinis was soothing, and, and then I was jolted. I can't see how you stand it, Mark. Tied to a skin flint like Hannigan just because you need his capital. And if it was me, I'd be tempted to bump the old coot off. <coughs> Jimmy, what happened, man? Uh, oh, here. Let me check my handkerchief. <coughs> oh, no. It's, it's not your fault. I, 
I've got to go. I, I just remembered. Appointment. What on earth had possessed me to talk about Hannigan? Barney was right. Dead right. I couldn't trust myself to face an evening with anybody I knew. I'd give myself away, sure. I, I looked at my watch. It was 6.30, and I was supposed to meet Barney's man at 6. I hurried back to the Pelican. It was still dark, of course, and there wasn't anyone waiting around who looked like he might be waiting for me. So I, I waited and waited, and, and I got more and more frightened. Something had slipped. I didn't have any alibi going for me. Then I realized I couldn't go through with it. A prison term for embezzlement was one thing, but the chair for murder... I had to get in touch with Barney. There, there was another bar across the street. The Green Parrot. They'd have a phone. They did. But the booth was occupied. A blousy blonde. Her boyfriend stood by the door, weaving slightly. She don't answer. Well, keep ringing it, Dolly. Keep ringing it. I am ringing. Well, we got to get a girl for lefty. We can't leave good old lefty out of the cold, you Wait know. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Huh? I'll call Helen. She's our honey. Let you love her. Call her. Just a minute. I got a number right here someplace. Uh, look, miss, uh, could I place a call if you don't mind? It's important. Well, you got a nerve. We was here first. Well, it's important or I wouldn't ask. Go find another phone. But this is the only one around here, yeah, please. Come up here, sport, honey. Let him have a look. All right. But well, make it snappy, will yes, you? Yes, yes, I will. Thanks. Thanks ever so much. Hello? Hello, is this Barney? No, Barney ain't here. Oh, well, can you tell me where I can reach him? Got no idea. Well, when do you expect him back? He ought to be around sometime. Well, how soon? I don't know. He don't tell me nothing. But I've got to reach him right now. Can you get a message to him? I could try What's on your mind? Uh, tell him, tell him this is the party he sent to the Pelican at six o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the Pelican's padlocked. I've been waiting outside, but the other party didn't show up. The one I was supposed to meet. Where you at now? I, I'm across the street, the Green Parrot. Look, have Barney call me, will you? Say, you gonna hog this thing all night? Uh, just a minute, please. L uh, listen, the number is Grant four nine three seven. You give some guys at least they want Look, to take please, your hold I'll on. be through in a second. Uh, Have you got that? Grant four nine three seven. Yeah, I got it. I'll tell him when he now comes look, in. brother. Okay, okay, I'm finished. Well, Thanks that's very much. About time. Okay, honey, now watch that number you have. Look, you see. I took a seat at the bar where I could keep one eye on the padlock door of the Pelican across the street and the other on the phone booth, and then I started sweating it out. I didn't need the silly cuckoo clock over the bar to tell me the passing of the minutes. Until suddenly I came to myself. Seven o'clock, and that confounded couple was still at the phone booth. Huh? Helen, Marie, Janet, Ethel, Dorothy. <laughs> well, gee, kid, they can't all have dates. Try another one. Let's well, see. Oh, here, here's a girl. Lucky you'll be crazy about well, her. Uh, uh, look, miss, before you make that call... Uh, oh, it's nosy uh, again. Listen, I, I'm waiting for a very important call. Won't you please stay off the line for uh, a few minutes? Well, 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 no, no, but this is vital. It's a matter of life and death. Ooh. Ooh, how dramatic. No, I mean it. Who writes your material, bud? Ah, go ahead, Dolly. Go ahead. Don't pay attention to this schmo. Look, we got to get lefty fixed Look, up. miss, please, you, you've got to get off that phone. Ah, listen, bust the fun's fun, but you watch out how you talk to my girl. I don't see? care. I've oh, got you to... don't care, huh? Well, now, you listen to me. No, you listen oh, to me. Oh, tough guy, huh? Hey, Dolly. Dolly, look at me. Hold on. It couldn't have lasted very long, but by the time they pulled the drunk off of me, somebody had yelled copper, and there was a big policeman filling the door. Okay, okay, now what gives here? Yes, he did it. No, he I didn't. started to beat up on her. No, no, please, officer, I... All right, break it up. Now back, folks. Hold on. Now which one started this? No, I didn't. I, uh, I didn't do anything. Uh, that's I just... enough. That's enough. I better take the both of you. No, but officer, I... Please, I... 
<laughs> Wait a minute. That, that's my call. That's the call I've been waiting for. Come along, will you? Don't oh, give me any trouble. No, no, but I must answer that phone. I've, I've you got to... You want to come along quietly or do you want to sample the end of this nightstick? No, but oh. you can't do this. Oh, I can't, can I? Uh, please. Now, what do you think of this? Wait. Uh, now, move, both of you. Hey, look at that. What? Headcuffs. No. Wait. Oh, brother, you pack a pretty good punch. Oh, might as well be pretty good boys. Oh, oh Harry, they're oh. taking you away. Ah, don't you worry, honey. Don't worry. You'll be out the morning. Oh, no, please. <laughs> Let me answer that phone. I said move. <laughs> In just a moment, we continue with Suspense. This is Johnny Baker with Communism on the Spot. In the ancient world, the top authorities on myths were the Greeks. In our time, the communists have that distinction. One of the top myths they've been circulating is that the Communist Party is a workers' party. Some of its members no doubt answer that description. But these have always been sort of window dressing. Actually, the party is a political machine made up overwhelmingly of state officials, the military, and industrial leaders. The workers in the Soviet Union, like everyone else, take their orders from above, from the bosses of the Communist Party, which isn't a workers' party at all, but is a regimented bureaucracy whose members have only one interest, themselves. And now... We continue with the second act of Alibi, starring Mr. Everett Sloan. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. The phone kept ringing in my ears. The phone with Barney on the other end. Barney and Salvation. And here I was in the squad car, speeding toward the police station, handcuffed to a stupid drunk. <laughs> oh, well, it was a good while a while to last. There wasn't a fella. Now, listen, i tell you the truth. I'm just as happy to get away from that pig. I figured I'd pop her off on lefty and get me another girl. Oh, <laughs> shut up, will you? <laughs> oh, no, don't be like that. Don't be like that. You worried about the little woman, maybe? No. Yeah? Come to think of it... The only time my old lady ever believed me when I stayed out all night, I was in jail. She could check up on that. <laughs> Wonderful alibi, jail. Alibi? Oh, the very best. Take it for me. Yes, of course. What a fool I was. I didn't need Barney now. Sure, it wasn't the most delightful way to spend the night in the drunk tank, but there'd be no question. It was perfect. Barney could go ahead and kill Hannigan now, and I could relax. The police car slowed down and pulled up to the curb. Only it wasn't the police station. It was a downtown corner by a cab stand. All right, you two, get out. What? Get out? Yeah. You two promised to quit acting like a couple of college kids. You can hop into a cab and go home. Officer? You're an officer or a gentleman? Yeah, yeah. I don't see any reason why the city should put you up for the night. There. The cuffs are off. Ah. Now, go on. Go straight home, you Ah, uh, sure, pal, sure. Now, but, officer... Now what? Well, I want to go to jail. Ah, oh, don't be a chop chum. You what? I... I want to go to jail. Why? Well, I... I can't exactly say. You'd better exactly say. I'm giving you a break. Yes, I, I, I know, only... Only what? Only, just don't turn me loose. Okay, buddy, I won't. Let you get going. Oh, yes, sir. So long, chump. I never heard the like. Wanting to go to jail. Yeah, sounds funny, I guess. Sure does. Sergeant will be interested in it, and the lieutenant. They'll want to ask you a lot of questions, mister. Good Lord, that hadn't occurred to me. Of course they'd ask questions. 
Questions I couldn't answer, beginning with the first fateful one. Why did I want to be in jail when my partner was being assassinated? I stiffened with panic, silent with shock. And then the police car swung into a side street which had just been watered down. It went into a skid. The officer tried to pull out, but he couldn't, and it crashed into a pole, throwing both of us clear. He was out cold, and I... I seemed to be all in one piece. I had to get away from there now. I had to get to Barney and call off the killing. Too many people would ask much too many questions. I lammed out of there fast and ran three blocks until I found a drugstore with a phone. Yeah? Is Barney there? No, he ain't. Oh, I, I thought he was. Well, he ain't. Listen, I called before. I left a message for Barney. You remember? Yeah. I give it to him. Well, then then he has been calling me. Where from? Now, how should I know? He don't tell me where he goes. Oh, but I... Now, listen. I give Barney the number. What more do you want? I guess nothing. I was you. I'd stick by that phone. Barney don't like creeps that waste his time. Thanks. Think nothing of it. Well, that was that... I had to get back to the Green Parrot, dangerous as that was, and wait for Barney's call. I had less than an hour to make that connection. Hey, hey, wait a minute, you. Uh, yes? Hey, you the guy caused a commotion in here? Sure you are. Hey, what are you doing back here? Oh, look, bartender, the officer let me go. He realized it wasn't my fault. All I wanted was to answer the phone. Outside. Not... I don't want no troublemakers in here. No, but but if you'll just listen. I, I wasn't making any trouble. It's an important call. I had to get to oh, the phone. Sure, sure. Look, you're breaking my heart. Come on, how do you get out? Do I throw you out? No, you, you, you can't. You... There. That's it. That's Barney. Wait a minute. I didn't say you... Wait, hold on there. No, you're not going to keep me away now. Oh, is that so? You, you, you let you... me go. Get that phone. Hello, Barney. Barney? Hey, where have you been keeping yourself anyway? Never mind that now, Barney. Alan, the, the man you told me to be, he never came. What do I do, Barney? Yeah, I know. There was a little change in plan, but don't you worry. Hey, okay, Look, you. Get away from that phone. No. What's going on there? It's nothing. Listen, Barney, that's not the point. I, I want to call it off. Call it off? Yes, you you can keep the money. I, I, I can't go through with it. You can't go through with it? No. That's a laugh. Well, tell me what to do, Barney. Tell me what to do. Uh, shock me, will you? Where will I get you out of that booth? Please, just one more second. Say, what is? Skip it, skip it. But hurry. I've only got a second. What do I do? Come to Ninth and Blossom. Somebody will meet you on the corner. Ninth and Blossom. I got it. Thanks, Barney. All right, bartender. I'm going. Oh, sir, you're going? Oh! And don't come back. It's guys like you give a place a bad name. I hit the sidewalk with a jar that shook my spine. And, and then a, a pair of solicitor's hands helped me to my feet. It was Harry, the drunk I'd been handcuffed to. Oh, gee, pal, you shouldn't have tried to go back in there. I, I, I oh. told you that barkeeper was tough. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, hey, did you see Dolly in there, my girl? No, no, I didn't. I had my uh, own problems. What's the difference? Who wants it? Oh, look, I'll tell you what, pal. You and me, we'll get a couple of girls. Uh, look, I've we'll got an appointment. That... Now, let go of my arm, will you? Hey, taxi, taxi! Hey, 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 how'd you get away from the cops? Uh, ninth and Blossom Driver, hurry. Oh, oh you got a date, huh? Well, maybe she's got a no, friend. No, oh, don't, don't get in here, please. please. Well, will what? you? Go ahead, driver, go ahead, go ahead. Look, please, it's not that kind of a well, date. You'll have to get out. Don't you try to ditch your old pal Harry Allen, will tell you? you? You've got to get out. Did you say Allen? Oh, well, sure. That's me, Harry Allen. <laughs> Why didn't didn't you tell me? Well, you never asked me. Allen, and I was trying to get rid of you. Friends to the end. Think of it, that's us. Oh. <laughs> and I thought Barney bungled the whole deal. And, and here you've been hanging on to me like a leech. I might have known he'd handle this in his own way. Uh, say... Don't you think we ought to be someplace where more people can see us? Huh? What for? Well, it's, it's nearly nine o'clock, the time I need the alibi, when, when Barney is killing my partner. Alibi? Kill? You're Alan. You said so. Well, 
Yeah. You, yeah. You're but... in the restaurant business. For me? You're not in the restaurant business. Barney didn't send you. I don't know, Barney. I don't know what you're talking about, but. What? Uh, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I do know what you're talking about. So that's why you wanted to go to jail. But, please, uh, stop! Oh, no, no, stop, no, 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 wait, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, let me out. No, let no you don't, no, you don't. Let me out. Come back here. Come, no, come, come back here. <laughs> I got away from that fast. It was five minutes to nine, and Ninth and Blossom were still a block away. I forced my pounding heart until I thought it would burst. You sure took your time getting there. Barney, I... I didn't know you were going to meet me. Come inside, off the street. Oh, sure, Barney, sure. Oh, I thought I, I'd never make it. Barney... What happened? Where was Alan? Don't worry. Everything's taken care of. Oh, but I, I, I don't understand. You amateurs never do. Wait a minute. What kind of a place is this? A garage. Go to the head of the class. Well, but, but what kind of an alibi could I have here with you? Where's Alan? The man I was supposed to meet. Him, he's busy. Busy? I told you, there's a change in the plan. He's alibying for another customer. Your partner, matter of fact. Uh, Hannigan? Say, you're real smart tonight, ain't you? You see, I got to thinking. I never worked on credit. Why should I start now? Why take a chance on them extra five bills? So I just put it up to Hannigan. You what? Sure. You saw the point right off. Andied up the whole grand, right on the line, cash money. Cash for what? Yes. Well, what's that gun for? What do you think? Oh, no, no. Hannigan wouldn't do that. Not to me. Why not? You was going to do it to him? No, 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 no. That's him, officer. He's the guy. All right, Barney. Hold out your hands. Oh, you won't get out of this one. Oh, officer. <laughs> you, you saved my life. You, you, you saw. You, you heard what he was going to do. Yeah, we heard everything, buddy. Everything. You two will make a nice pair of cellmates. Amateurs. Suspense. Mr. Everett Sloan starred in Alibi, written by Lawrence Goldman. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Supporting Mr. Sloan in Alibi were Ted DeCorsia, Eddie Marr, Sandra Gould, Peter Leeds, Jack Moyles, and Jack Crucian. Suspense. to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.